Gerald Chodak. Among the various types of clinical studies available, the gold standard of doing a study is what we call a prospective randomized controlled trial. These studies tend to be longer, they tend to be more expensive, but the results of a prospective randomized con controlled trial will give us the best opportunity to provide patients with counseling about what they should or shouldn't do. So how do we do these studies and what's so good about them? Well, prospective means that we are going to start today, design a study in which we enroll patients, and let's say we're going to compare two different treatments for prostate cancer. The way this study is done is a computer will decide whether a patient gets treatment number one or treatment number two. Patients can't decide, doctors can't decide, because otherwise it would lose some of its credibility. So this makes it a randomized trial. Randomized because the computer is deciding who gets which treatment. It's prospective because we're gonna do it going forward. And it's controlled, meaning we're going to try and balance both groups of patients for as many things as possible. So in the end, when we look at the results and we say treatment one was better than treatment two, we can say that there's no other good explanation for why this result occurred other than the difference between the effects of the different treatments. And when studies are designed this way, statisticians can determine about how many patients need to be enrolled in order to give the study a sufficient power or strength to be able to prove whether something is true. Uh, for example, if I want to explain this to you, if I think that treatment one is a little bit better than treatment two, I'm going to need a fair number of patients, a large number of patients. Five, 10, 15, 20, 50 patients probably won't be enough. So these studies, when done well, are designed with enrolling a lot of patients. And that gives us the best opportunity to determine whether there is or isn't a difference between the treatments. Now, what's so important about a controlled prospective randomized trial? Here's the information. With the results of such a trial, we can actually make a recommendation that one treatment is better than another treatment. So if we do this study, of two treatments, treatment one and treatment two, if the study proves that, statement, that treatment number one is better than treatment number two, then I'm gonna to say to the patients, we can recommend treatment one better than treatment two because of this prospective randomized controlled trial. Now, suppose the study doesn't show a difference. Well, then I would have to say to a patient, treatment one and treatment two look to be about the same and therefore they are both reasonable options for treating the disease. Sometimes you might find one is significantly worse. Well, that information will be provided as well. Now, in the area of prostate cancer, we are getting more prospective randomized controlled trials, but in too many situations, as you'll learn later in these ver various videos, there just aren't the kinds of studies that have been done to allow us, for, allow us to tell you that treatment one is really better than treatment two or any of the other options that we have available. Keep this in mind when you are being counseled about the various options because doctors do have their personal biases and understanding the kind of study that a doctor is using to counsel you may give you added security or confidence that indeed this treatment makes sense for you or this treatment doesn't. Bottom line is the best trial, the only trial that permits us to make good recommendations is the prospective randomized control trial. Thank you.